It's time for We the People with Chris Berg, your voice for the heartland. Pretty staggering stat right here. I just heard the other day that 1 in 11 young people are now being diagnosed with autism. 1 in 11. If anyone has any different stats, call in. Let me know. 888-598-8464. 888-598-8464. Why do I bring this up? Because right now we're doing a special segment on health for young people. We talk a lot about health and vitality on the show. If there's one thing that you and I can do to begin to mitigate the cost of health care, it's obviously taking responsibility of our own health. If we don't do that, we really have no one else to blame um, than ourselves about what's happening in this health care arena. There's a poll I'm going to talk about uh, later on in the show that now people are saying that Medicare doesn't have to be changed. But yeah, we can solve our debt crisis and leave Medicare just the way it is. There is no way that can happen. With me in studio this morning, Dr. Tiffany Johnson and also Dr. Delray and her wonderful daughter, Kenna. Yep. McKenna, we'll call her Kenna. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Morning. Hi. So let's start, jump right into this thing. I want to give the phone number out one more time. I think this is such an important topic, uh, health and vitality. We see more people being diagnosed with ADHD, autism, allergies. I saw recently a great article where now doctors are passing off more and more pharmaceuticals to young kids. Just is the thing to do, but it's really not. Number to call in if you have questions, 888-598-8464. 888-598-8464. First question, this is a great one. Why is this generation going to be the first in its history not to outlive its parents? Dr. Tiffany. Or well, Dr. Delray. Yes. This generation, you know, according to Discover Magazine years ago, has said, you know, this is going to be the first generation to not outlive their parents. And that was shocking when I first heard it because obviously McKenna is seven years old and that's her generation. And I said, how can this be happening? And we're looking at chronic disease happening at a younger and younger age. And now research is showing, wow, it has nothing to do with genetics. Their genes aren't any different than ours. So what's different? It's coming from our lifestyle, our environment, the way that we're eating, the way that we're moving, the way that we're thinking, and then, you know, what they're exposed to with media. But then also, you know, chemical exposure is higher among that generation than any other. So it starts from pregnancy, you know, and then on to what they're being exposed to in their environment. It's much different than what we have been exposed to. So and, go ahead, Dr. And I think um, children this day and age are very used to the processed fast pace. Moms are working. Dads are working. There's not the dinner meal anymore. They have Pop-Tarts for breakfast. School lunches, not as healthy as we need them to be. They're very processed. So just like Delray said, it's... It's the food. They don't, they're don't. they not equipped with the energy that they need from the start of the day to be the best that they can be. I mean, to get into some of the physiology, I don't know if either one of you have these stats, but you know, we talk about the development of the human brain at a young age. I've said before, we've talked about poverty in some of the schools, even locally, and these kids are showing up. They don't have enough money for the milk break or the snack break. If you're not feeding your brain, it can't operate the right way to actually maximize the education. So we wonder why... Our education system, look, look, it's going off the roof. Granted, the system's broken, but also if you're sitting in a classroom and you can't learn and think, it's pretty tough. So can you explain a little bit about the neurological development and what we can do, obviously, to feed that for young people? Yeah, and as a chiropractor, that's the most one of the most important premises that we talk about is what develops first in a child, even during pregnancy, is the central nervous system. If we're not getting the right nutrients in as the baby's developing and growing from day one, obviously that's going to affect their behavior down the road. And then once they're born, feeding them the wrong things at inappropriate ages you know, is going to stress the body as well. Um, one of the most powerful things that I think parents can do is watch a YouTube video called The Bionic Burger. And what that is, it's a very powerful video in showing what is in processed fast food. Um, take two meals. Take one from a fast food restaurant, and I won't even name any names, some of the top ones. Take that and put it on your counter and see how long it takes to actually mold or break down, meaning does it have nutrients in it for your child? Then take one from a local grass-fed farmer, you know, beef, or a local mom-and-pop store. How long does it take for that to mold on your shelf? 
Show that to your kids. It's extremely powerful. Guess how long it takes one of those burgers to break down from a fast food. I think last time you told me it never breaks down, correct? Exactly. So that's the nutrition that we're trying to feed them. If they start off with that meal for breakfast, how well are they going to be focused? Or like Dr. Tiffany said, Pop-Tarts, you know, something processed. I think what we need to say is parents are doing the best that they can with the education that they have. They're not doing wrong. They just don't know an easier, faster way to do it from home with Whole Foods. As a mom, I'm going to do what's best for my child with the education that I know. I would never put something in her body nor anybody out there right now that I thought was doing harm to them. So the the power is in education. It is, but also the reality, you and I, I think all can speak to this. Uh, you know, I know that you've got a couple kids. I've got a young daughter. People are busy. Typically yes. today, both parents are working um, you, with taxes and Obviously, inflation, people are saying, look, I've got to have a second parent work just to put food on the table and pay the rent or pay the mortgage. So talk to me about some easy, simple things that parents can do to make sure that their kids are getting proper nutrition. Yeah, we just wrote out five. That's what our talk Mm -hmm. is about tomorrow at noon at Dr. Tiffany's office is healthy kids. The easiest ways to start change um, now. Something that you could do after, you know, we talk here today is Get your kids to eat breakfast and a good breakfast, something that's cheap and afford eggs. Eggs are super easy to cook up and it's protein and it keeps them sustained instead of cereal. Switching out the cereals and the processed stuff for breakfast is huge and keeping them hydrated with proper things, not juice or pop. But water. But I think that's what I'm getting at. So you mm-hmm. say eggs, I'm with you 100%, yep. but the mom is going, come on, give me a break. I got to get my kid to school. I got to get Hard to work. Hard boil them the night before. Ah. And have them ready. Even cut just up. cut up fruit. Yep. I mean, the fruit and oatmeal. Our kids love oatmeal. Mm-hmm. Put a little bit of coconut milk in there, almond milk. Um, it's sustainable. They're not going to be starving. They don't get great snacks at school unless we pack them. Making sure they get water. Even children, infants, adults should be consuming half of their body weight in pure filtered water. Mm-hmm. That's missing. I just had a conversation with... Um, my youngest teacher at school, it's milk and juice break. We don't ever do milk and juice break. And he started to feel a little bit left out, so I got a bill for juice. And I said, honey, what is this little <laughs> bill? Mommy, I'm not having any of that at school. I said, but Gavin, you are. I see. I owe $53.53. And I talked to the teacher, and it was a feeling left out thing. And he said, mom... I had it about a month ago. I had apple juice and I'm addicted. I want it every day. So a little carton of apple juice has 25 grams of sugar and a can of pop has 34. We're missing it. The juice piece, as parents, we think we're giving some kind of nutrients.